Imagine a rash that uh, spreads like wildfire, bringing fever, fatigue and unbearable itchiness. What is it? Chicken pox. Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on chicken pox. In this video, we are going to cover everything which you need to know about chicken pox from its causes, symptoms to prevention and treatment. Chicken pox is an infection also called as varicella caused by a virus called varicella zoster virus. It is common uh, herpes uh, type 3 virus, hypo herpes virus, uh, herpes by the family. Uh, in women's virus with uh, lubricapsid and repeat and over to this virus um, proteins, uh, it has double stain in DNA. 125,000 uh, uh, base plays, diameter 180, uh, 200 uh, nanometer, and I also had drill in symmetry. Now, how is chickenpox transmitted? It may transmit through air when an infected person coughs or sneezes, and you may inhale it. It may also transmit when you directly contact the infected person's rashes or blisters. It may transmit through the oral secretions or fluids from the vesicles of infected person. It may also transmit it through contaminated surfaces. This virus, it may live on the contaminated surfaces for a short time. It may also transmit transplacentally from mother to the baby. Now, who are at the risk of developing chicken pox? The only reservoir for chicken pox is humans, which means the virus can live, grow and multiply only in humans. The chicken pox or varicella zoster virus is a highly contagious disease which means it can spread from the infected person to a healthy person very easily. The population who are not vaccinated or who did not develop the disease earlier are at a higher risk of developing the infection. The population who are vaccinated or who are infected earlier with chicken pox are at a slightly lower risk of developing the infection. Even if they develop the infection, the symptoms are very mild with fewer rashes or mild fever. The incubation period of chicken pox is 10 to 21 days, which means during this period, the patient is infected with the virus but does not develop any symptoms. After two weeks of infection, the patient enters prodromal period in which fever, malaise and body pains are seen in the patient. Chicken pox is a global disease with outbreaks occurring in the all regions of the world. All genders and races are affected uh, equally and it becomes epidemic among the suspected individuals during the seasonal peaks. The primary attack rate of the chicken pox is 90% among the suspected individuals. It shows the seasonal trends because of low humidity, cooler temperatures gives the more stability of the viral structure and increased indoor exposure and the secondary attack rate of the chicken pox is 70 to 90 percent among the uh, suspected populations uh, ma mainly like in schools, uh, uh, colleges and mainly hostels etc. and uh, mainly it affects children less than 12 years of age. When to see a doctor? When you have low grade fever and headache, tiredness, feeling of being unwell and uh, the hallmark of this infection is skin lesions, I mean itchy rash and uh, burning uh, patient feel uh, burning pain also and uh, now severe pruritus which means that itching and patient uh, feels to uh, patient wants to scratch the lesion so we will talk about the characteristic of this uh, rashes and uh, rash starts on appearing on the trunk and uh, spread to the face and the scalp and extremities also so it is a superficial centripetal rash and uh, evolving with the multiple crop of uh, lesions with leomorphic. What does it mean? It is nothing but that different levels of rashes at a single point of time. Rashes can be appear on the genital region or oral buccal mucosa and uh, we can see on the palms and soles also. So this mm, rash will start as macule which is nothing but red dot, a small red dot and it forms and it got rised and uh, forms a papule, papule and it uh, ultimately forms the vesicle which is nothing but fluid filled blister and uh, mm, don't you think it is looking like a dew drop on the rose petal and uh, uh, as the time progresses natural adaptation of the blister forms the 
pustule pustule leading to formation of the crusted papule and the finally scab will be formed fever is going to rise with the increase of the new crop of lesions and uh, if the all lesions are crusted so patient is non infectious and we need to think uh, we need to remember one more thing period of infectivity means when the patient can transmit the disease into disease to other persons uh, which means two days before the appearance of rash up to five days after the rash onset how can we diagnose chickenpox it is mainly a clinical diagnosis which is easily made by looking at the characteristic rash and history of recent exposure the gold standard investigation is zang sphere under zang sphere we take the sample from the vesicle and we stain it we look under the microscope under the microscope we see multi nucleated giant cells which are none other than macrophages eating the virus infected cells which are caudal bodies confirmatory test which is uh, pcr test uh, under that we can see varicellar zoster virus dna from the collected sample and elisa test can also be done to detect the antibodies against the virus if we get infected with chickenpox how to manage this and reduce the spread of chickenpox the main thing you should keep in mind is to maintain good hygiene in which includes daily bathing and soaps washing hands etc and the next point daily tepid water bath which means the water should neither be too hot or too cold next Wet compresses are better than dry lotions for relief of itching. Drink plenty of water and broths, electrolyte, drink beverages. Caramel lotions can be applied to affected areas to reduce the itching and inflammation. Wear soft and loose clothes. Keep your loose clothes, towels separate from others. Pharmacological treatment can be divided according to the age group. Children below under the age of 12 years. should be treated according to the same symptoms and it is self resolving and the most important thing to keep in mind we cannot give aspirin to the children as it may leads to rise syndrome in adolescents and adults we can give antiviral therapy anti histamines anti itch therapy and topical lotions anti histamines and anti itch such as chlorpheniramine cetrazine and topical ointments such as calamine lotion and hydrocortisone tropical lotion antiviral drugs like acyclovir 800 mg can be given 4 to 5 times a day viral cyclovir 1 g given for 3 times a day this treatment shall be carried on for 5 to 7 days if you have any fever you can take paracetamol we must know the complications of chickenpox it we which includes it can cause the secondary bacterial infections of the skin and the same virus will reactivate as shingles in your fifth and sixth decade and uh, uh, and the most severe complication of the chickenpox is pneumonia which is called varicella pneumonia and uh, you must visit uh, doctor when you have these symptoms after recovery from chickenpox uh, which includes tachypnea cough hemoptosis or even if you have confusion you must visit your doctor and uh, recent, uh, recent uh, researchers are saying that uh, it can be associated with the gullian barre syndrome and the uh, transverse myelitis also and uh, other complications include acute benign uh, uh, cerebellar ataxia and uh, aseptic meningitis and as well as encephalitis what are the precautions need to be taken to prevent these complications never scratch the lesion as it is leading to the secondary bacterial infections of the skin and keep your fingernails clean and short and uh, please uh, better avoid the sunlight because as uv rays can damage the natural eruption process of that vesicle and uh, use pain medications judiciously and use all antiviral medication as prescribed how can we prevent the chickenpox in healthy individuals it is a combination of vaccination good hygiene practices and uh, avoid the close contact with the infected individuals the best way to prevent the chickenpox is vaccination 
uh, which is recommended in children and adolescents. Uh, the vaccine aim is Varivax, which is a OCA strain, and uh, in children it should be given in two doses. And first dose should be given in uh, 12 to 15 months of age. Second dose should be given four years to six years of age. In adolescents more than 13 years of age, they should receive two doses. Uh, uh, at least one month a part uh, and the vaccine is very safe and efficacious and in more than 50 or 60 years of uh, patients to prevent the joster or shingles we must give joster vax or shingrix in two doses post exposure prophylaxis which means if you expose it to this virus uh, like from your friends or colleagues uh, it includes uh, two methods active immunization and passive immunization active immunization includes uh, you must take the vaccine if you recently expose it within 5 days and passive immunization not needed in the healthy individuals it is uh, needed in the pregnant women or immunocompromised people following exposure within the 10 days so though the immunocompromised people includes hiv patients or those who are on the chronic steroid therapy so uh, and uh, infants also they must receive the varicella zoster immunoglobulins to prevent further complications in these patients thank you so much